Number one issue I see with companies is not they don't have a great product or service, it's that they don't have enough traffic. The hardest thing you can do is try to build an audience from scratch. It's three ways to get more traffic, right? You can buy it, build it, borrow. And people gotta begin to understand that they wanna spend the money today and they want an immediate return and not understand that sometimes the return isn't now, it's later. It has to work where it has to work. Welcome to another episode of Circle of Greatness. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis, and I got a super special episode today. Uh, we're bringing on one of the CEOs, co-founders of Traffic, Sales, and Profits, my guy, Lamar Tyler, someone who I look up to, someone I look up to as a mentor and all around just an amazing businessman who sets a certain standard of excellence. So I had to come bring him on the podcast. Without further ado, welcome to my guy, Lamar Tyler. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Thank I appreciate it. coming on, man. Excited. Yeah. We yeah. got them dates together. I, finally, <laughs> bro. I know, how, I know how crazy your schedule is. You're running um, just such an amazing company. And um, I just got to really commend you. When I came to the office, it just exuded excellence to me. Thank you. Like everything y'all do is from the office to the event space to just your events. Um, I just think about black excellence when I think about you and your wife. So I, um, I just want to commend you on that. That's something that I um, I wish I had that a uh, guidance like that earlier on. Like, mm. cause how y'all operating is just it's amazing, man. Thank you. You know, and what's wild is that. Um, what we try to do is make sure we're extremely intentional. Yeah. Like when we got six core values, one of them is we strive for excellence. Yeah. So we tell the team all the time, are we gonna hit excellence every time? No, but if we we pushing for it, yeah. we always gonna end up in a good place mm -hmm. no matter what. So so that push for excellence, um, you combine that with integrity. Yeah. Yeah. You can you can beat almost anybody out there. Yeah. How are you how are you casting a vision across your company? Like how is everybody operating with this certain level of excellence? Like what is What's some keys to do that? So most important is to have like an actual mission that everybody can rally around. Yeah. So we got like a, a mission. We had a three-year goal, right, that incorporated our clients and how much, um, you know, revenue we wanted them to make, how many people we wanted to make, and that's what we pushed for for three years. We hit that goal. We stretched it out to a 10-year goal. And now every time we meet, we do, uh, you know, an annual uh, state of the company where I talk about where we're going this year. We do yeah. quarterly and monthly meetings. Yeah. Every time we meet for that monthly meeting, we're going over, these are the six core values, right? Core values are what we live by and how What's we, the five of you how we operate. Uh, we strive for excellence. We're honest and truthful. Yeah. Um, uh, we're accountable for our actions. Uh, we believe in personal. We promote personal development. Yeah. Um, you asked me on the spot now, I can't remember. No, you, it's good I, I get it. <laughs> on the fly, right? I wouldn't have known mine on, right off the cuff like that. Yeah, but no, yeah. they all, they all pretty much the zoo excellence. Yeah, it's, yeah. That, it's that piece. Uh, we do more with less, right? Yep. That's out of the days me and my wife started out by doing documentary films. Yeah. And, and we would have a real small team that would create excellent level products that we felt could sit on the shelves and compete with anything in Best Buy yeah. or you know any other movies that were coming out. And we said we never want to get to a, a point where the company, the business is bloated and we got all these extra you know, pieces and things that allow us not to move and operate in a nimble fashion. Yeah. So just all those pieces together. And I know, no, I know the main, one of the core pieces of your company is you train people how to get more traffic, sales, and profit in their business. Correct. Um, I want to kind of talk through that. Like I want to really, I almost, we treat this almost like a masterclass. Like Lamar, how do we get more traffic? How do we get right. more sales? How do we get more profit? So I kind of want to guide this conversation around how can we help listeners listening and although my coach told me, hey, when you're doing these episodes, David Shans, you only ask questions for me. So <laughs> I ain't gonna be fully selfish, but I want people, yeah. I just want people, businesses to thrive. So yeah. I know you help, whether it's online and offline type right. businesses. So what's some strategies you would say in this season to focus on getting more traffic to your, to your business? Yeah, so that's it, right? And when we talk about traffic, for people that may not know, we're talking about yeah. lead generation. We're yeah. talking about people, if you've got a brick and mortar, like people walking in off the streets into your actual brick and mortar store, for online people landing on your website, into your Shopify store, whatever it may be. So most businesses I find, like number one issue I see with companies, is that it's not they don't have a great product or service. The world is full of people with amazing products and services. Yeah. It's that they don't have enough traffic. They don't have enough people to actually see what they're selling mm -hmm. and enough consistently seeing it, right? I always talk about um, your business needs CPR. Yeah. Consistent, predictable revenue. Yeah, that's good. Listen, because if you ain't got CPR, then you're doing 5011 side hustles, trying to make the mm. one thing come together. If you ain't got CPR, then you can't hire people and you can't yeah. build a team because you're afraid, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make payroll yeah. when payroll come, right? If you ain't got CPR, 
Um, it's just hard to get focused. You'll never leave if you say like, hey, I want to transition from nine to five to four. You'll never be able to do it if you can't be consistent. Yeah. So to do consistent revenue, we got to have consistent traffic. Mm. Um, one of my earliest mentors, Jermaine Griggs, always talked about it's three ways to get more traffic, right? You can buy it, you can build it, you can borrow it. Mm. And when we're talking mm. about, let's start with building it. That's the organic way that most people do. They say, all right, you know, I call that um, like shaking hands and kissing babies, yeah, right? Yeah. Like they politicians out here and they meeting people, they greeting folks, trying to, you know, get them to their website, get them to their, their table, their vendor booth, whatever it may be. Um, and that's organic social, things like that. The thing is great about it is that, you know, those organic people are your ride or dies. They the ones that be like, Neo, I remember when you was in Philly and we yeah, first got yeah. on, blah, blah, blah. What most people watching this know is that when we talk about organic, for most people it's slow, yeah. right? So... Um, and on top of that, most people don't do what they need to even do, the level of activity they need to do to be successful organically. Now, the other two we talk about is how can we borrow traffic and, and buy traffic. Mm. Borrowing traffic is joint ventures. It's partnering with people, right? You do a great job of that. Yeah. You know, who, who is somebody that already has built the audience? They got a community. And I want to be clear, most of the time, we condition to think that every community is online. Yep. But it's people that got your specific avatar that's offline, is doing meetups in cities all across this country mm. that we can connect Ooh. with, right, that already built it. So. Yeah. The hardest thing you can do is try to build an audience from scratch. Yes. The easiest thing Let's you talk do about it. Yes. is I, go to somebody who already got an audience, who most of the time, most people audiences don't even know how to monetize those audiences. That's a fact. So if you go to them and say, hey, I got an actual solution. I got a product or service. It's a great fit. And can we offer it to your people? And you're going to get a commission or something off of it, right? If they're not making no money off of it, as long as it, it matches the integrity of what they're trying to do and how they're trying to serve their people, yeah. why would they say no? Yeah. Now, the thing with, can I go a little bit deeper into this? Please, that's, that's the, what it's about. The biggest mistake people make when it comes to borrowing traffic and trying to connect with people, right, is, uh, let's talk about three of them. Number one, not reaching out to enough people. Because mm. they think, hey, I want to partner with somebody, so let me reach out to one person, but it's all a numbers game, yeah. right? So I need to reach out to maybe 100 people if I'm trying to talk to 20, and then at 20, I might do a deal with maybe five to 10. Yep. Because even when I talk to 20, right, most of them you're going to hear back from, but we got to be consistent with follow-up. If I get 20, when I get with 20 and I talk to the 20, some of them, I talk to people where I'm just like, man, like, like they, what they do is not in line with what I do. How they serve their people is not how I serve my people, right? And we might have to break that down to get with that. Um, but then out of that last bit, it might be, okay, this is the handful of people I actually want to work with where it fits. We agree to what we're going to do and move on. The other thing when they do this is you have to lead with what's in it for them. Yep. Too many times people, I've seen them over the years, right, hit me up and they say, well, you know what, I got this great product, I got this service, I want to do X, Y, and Z to your audience. And they, and they do it just all on the guys that it's good, right, it's good for them, I'm doing good work. But we already do good work. Yeah. Hey, you know, I want to help the people out. We're already helping the people out. And what most people don't understand when they reach out to larger influencers or larger brands is that if I'm promoting your thing, that means what? That I'm not promoting mine. Yeah. And most people that are monetizing, right? Like we got a, a marketing calendar. And that means I'm literally got to take something off my marketing calendar to add your thing. So it has to be some benefit other than what I already got going on. Yeah. Right? So it's getting clear about that. And then we talk about buying traffic. Of course, that's your Instagram ads, your Facebook ads. But Neil, you know, when we use on my podcast, we talked about this deeper. Um, I think like too many times we're getting lazy with our marketing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we're forgetting like the core fundamental pieces. Like what we do can be so much greater than just what we run on Facebook or what we run on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about like how much does it cost me to acquire a customer? Yeah. So I can not only acquire customers online through digital. Um, right now we got radio ads running, right? For our next event. Yeah. And they running heavy, right? On, on Radio One stations, yeah. right? All throughout. I got to I gotta do that today. Cause you gave me the connect. I got to finish. Cause I don't know where I look. That's getting finished today. I got you, yeah, right? Yeah. So we got radio ads running. We got, um, you know, digital ads running. Um, you know, we sponsor events. We'll come into an event. Like, whatever it Talk is. Talk about that, because you gave me that play, and I started doing that play. Tell them did, did, it? did it work for you? Yeah, you know, I feel like it worked, but I didn't do enough of them. So, you know, I, you kinda, it's a numbers, it's a numbers game. game. It's you a can't numbers do game. one and be like, oh, you got to It's a numbers game. Do it. and, and so I didn't it, do right? enough of them. So, when Neil talking about, it just come down to, like, what is my cost per lead? Or what's my customer acquisition cost? Yeah. How much does it cost you to actually get that person? Yeah. So, again, people are not just on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Yeah. So, there have been events we go in and sponsor an event. A lot of times... Um, with small events, it don't cost a lot to sponsor them. Yeah. And way less for, for folks that's actively running like a lot in advertising, you can, you know, sponsor the event for a fraction of what you're spending on your, your monthly uh, digital marketing spend. Yeah. So the same way we would, you know, advertise on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, something like that, we'll sponsor an event and we're looking at it for the same result. How many leads can I get out of this event, right? If I sponsor an event, I want to make sure that we're visible at the event. If I sponsor an event, I also want to make sure I got the opportunity to speak. 
Because mm. I know that if I can get in front of the people, I got them. Done. Right? So it's a lot harder if I just got a booth and I'm to the side somewhere. But I could have a booth. I could have my team there. But I also want to speak and get in front of the people. Yeah. And when I get in front of them, like I said, my metric of if it's successful or not is, like I said, how many leads do we capture from that event? And then how can we move those leads from, you know, getting on our list to getting to an event to getting into an actual program? Mm. And when I look now at, at what was, you know, not a large investment in events, I can look back and trace it through our uh, CRM, customer relationship management software, and see that, hey, you know what? Those people opted in there, and then they came to a conference, and then they joined, you know, my high-ticket program. And now they've been there for years. So we're talking about maybe six-figure returns yeah. off of maybe like a five-figure investment or maybe less than that. It's crazy. And it's like, what we also got to start doing, Lamar, is we got to start looking at lifetime value. That part. Like, because I can say I sponsored that event, right? And I may only got one sell. But if that individual pays me for the next five that's years. Because that one sale is one sale so far. So far. And so that's far. What people be forgetting. So a lot of the marketing strategies I do, they're not for now, they're for later. Right. And people got to begin to understand that they want to spend the money today and they want an immediate return and not understanding sometimes the return isn't now, it's later. That's it. So man. I love when you talked about that. And you, it's so funny. It's like, I, I just don't want nobody to miss with you. That numbers game. So I've been reaching out for just some acquisition stuff and different things I'm doing, partnerships. And I'm like, I'm just putting it out there. And what happened, it, this happened two, three times. I, you know, I partnered with people on challenges and virtual events and I reached out to a lot of people. I had the conversation, hey, Lamar, let's go do this, this and that, right? They, they said, you know, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. You know how many of them came back six months later, mm -hmm. a year later? It's powerful. So the 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 one time reach out conversation, and these were each a million dollar uh, relationships were that were generated. One maybe eight hundred grand, and one was another five hundred maybe. But what I'm saying is, then we'll do it again. Mm -hmm. But I reached out six months ago or eight months ago. At the time, wasn't the right time. That part. They reached back out. Hey, let's go get it done now. So one of the other strategies is is people should start reaching out anyway because of the future possibilities that can potentially happen. That's it. But you know, one of the, the beauty of what you just talked about yeah. is that you ain't get emotional. Yeah. Because too many times I see entrepreneurs reach out to somebody and they like, man, they ain't hit me back yeah. and they feel in some kind of way. But what they don't understand is like people be busy. Busy. Like for real. Like busy is a real, yeah. you know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> just us connecting be hard. Yeah. Like, like busy is a real in life thing. And a lot of times people are trying to view the life of somebody else through their life. Yeah. So, you know, hey, I may have, you know, my nights and weekends free, but that don't mean the next person do. Yeah. You know, I may have an empty inbox every day, but that don't mean the next person do. Mm -hmm. Right. So so being able to follow up and continuously follow up. The other thing is a lot of times, like if somebody reach out to me, rarely am I doing a deal with somebody I don't know at all. Yeah. Right. Because some things I need to check out. Mm -hmm. But if you reach out, what it does, it puts you on my radar. Yeah. So then I begin to look. So that that like period of six months could have been, hey, you know what? Um, them just watching you and being like, oh, this dude is on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this dude can do what he say he's going to do. Oh, this dude, he literally is making these moves. Oh, this dude operating in integrity. Like all the things that people want to see, yeah. sometimes you just got to showcase it. And, and one of the things, you just got to be in the game long enough. Yeah. Right? Like me and my wife, Ronnie, we've been doing this for 15 years now. I can't tell you how many times there are people from my past that pop. Actually, I just talked about running radio ads, right? Mm -hmm. We went to a, a new station group, Radio One here, and we run the ads. I asked somebody from my team contact me and say, hey, this is what we want to do. You know, my boss, he's trying to do this and that. The lady that got on the phone said, oh, my goodness, Ronnie Lamar. Mm. I ran ads for them for their movies wow. 10 years ago. Wow. Didn't even know the brand we got yeah. now, right? Yeah. Got up to speed on that. Everything is relationships. Wow. So, so mm. we got it. Like, the internet got us mixed up a little bit because we're looking in life in such a short-term thing. Yeah. And, and a lot of it is, like I said, hey, you know, I'm going to put out a dollar today. I got to make $2 back today. Yep. Well, you know, ideally that's nice, but a lot of times, hey, you know what? I just want to feed the funnel and I just want to put that dollar in. And I know, like you said, if I got a, a distinct customer journey, if I got a path and a process of people to actually move towards and through my offers, then I can put a dollar out today and that dollar, it may give me a dollar back, may give me two, may give me 50 cents. I don't know. But if I know my numbers, yeah. right, I know that at the end of the day, that dollar may turn into 10,000, yeah. 100,000, a million or whatever else, because not just we talking about high ticket, we talking about high ticket programs where the number one goal is always retention. Yeah. So <laughs> you got a person uh, that talk, can renew how, how time you, and time again. How do you retain your people? Let's talk, tell me about that. One Coach of the most important things we do, right? Um, 
Um, we're in like, I'm asking, we're in year eight. We come finishing up year seven, going to year eight for it. One of the most important things we do is I'm always assessing how can we get them better and faster results. Mm -hmm. Number one, right? Like it ain't about, you know, how much can I make from, how much can we do this? How can I get, because I know if I get them better and faster results, I'm always going to be good. Yeah. So, so each year we looking at it and saying, okay, like what can we add that would get them money faster, that would get them to build teams, faster? like whatever the thing is, right? We're always talking and assessing, like what are the biggest challenges and pain points that they have right now and how can we overcome those inside of the program? And then sometimes it's stuff that we can do. Sometimes it's things like, hey, like that's not really the business, so we can't get into that, but how can we connect them with somebody else? But number one, just looking at like, what's the needs? How can we attack those needs? How can we serve our people better? Mm, number two good. is being intentional about renewals, right? Being intentional about retention. Yeah. Being intentional in communicating. It is one of the things I was telling somebody recently. A lot of times we sell somebody into something, and then we kind of put them to the side and go to sell the next person. Mm -hmm. But what you have to do consistently is re-enroll those people into the thought process of remembering why they signed up in the first place. Because yeah. you know, right, once you get somebody signed up for something, it's, man, life is life. Like, life be life, life out here. That's a fact. Bro, like, like, so as soon as they sign up for your program, guess what? They beefing with their spouse. Mm. Guess what? They got a death in the family. Yep. Guess what? Their kids acting crazy. Yep. Guess what? Like, this bill or, or, the, or the car broke down, they got to get it. Like life and all these things are going on. So what are you doing to consistently re-enroll your people in the process of why they joined mm, in the first place? That's good. So that's what I was like. I love live events, right? You know, you're an, you're an event guy too, so you know. Like I love live events because there's nothing like getting people physically in a room together. Yep. And that emotion, right? That yep. camaraderie, that 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 kinship. Yep. And when we get them in a room together, that's one of the ways we remind them again, right? Like what's special about this space? And what's special is the people. And, and a lot of coaches, I think, get it mixed up because you can get so tied into your ego. Like, I realized a long time ago, like, my calling ain't necessarily to be the best and smartest coach in the world to coach and train everybody. Yeah. My calling is to do enough to get the right people in the room. When I get the right people in the room, all the magic can happen. That's a fact. I be telling people all the time, you're not joining this for me. You're joining this for the family. That part. Like, the family you're about to create. Like, I was, I was trying to reverse engineer how I was able to create the success that I have. And I'm like, yo, most of it was all relationships and relationships and really exposure, but getting in them rooms, connecting with you, connecting with right. It changes the game because you've given me nuggets, like, like the music nugget that we going to talk about yeah, in a minute. Yeah. And I'm like, that's going to make me a lot of money and it's going to create a lot of impact in the future. Like game. And I'm like, all I'm going to do is I go compound all of those things. Mm -hmm. Lamar just gave me something. Uh, Russell Brunson gave me something. Myron gave me something. All I'm doing is taking all of that That's info it. and just allowing it to help me grow crazy. But the community, all my business partners now, I met them at an event, like Traffic Sales and Profit. Like that's where I met everybody. Everybody I do business with, I meet them at these events and it changes the game. That's it. And you yeah. know what's wild is I can't tell you how many times and the further me and my wife get out in this game, how many times people have just been in the seats watching for years, Yeah. right? To sign up and say, man, I, I came to y'all first event back in 2017 or 2018, right? That's yeah. my first time there. And I joined this year. Wow. And the number one reason they joined, like, like people say, Lamar, what's your superpower? Consistency. Mm. It ain't, yeah. it ain't like, a, like a social media trick. It ain't yeah. like some special kind of, yeah. you know, conversion hack. Yeah. Like just staying in the game. Yeah. Like how, how as a business owner, can you just stay in the game and have longevity? Yeah. If you can just stay in the game, you destined to win. Yeah. And it's funny, you talk about consistency. Most people don't have that. Not at all. They're not willing to stick. So what are some things that you're coaching people through on how to stay consistency? I, I know it's mindset, but what are some things that, because I'll be like, I'll be trying to figure, I'm like, yo, it's not that hard. Like, you yeah. got to set a goal and a target and do whatever you can to hit that target. But you can't stop. Like the reason why a lot of people, like you saying, they rock with me, rock with you, because they can see that we're not going anywhere. Exactly. Like people not even supporting your business because they don't even know if you're in business. Exactly. You ain't even posting about it. You're not talking about it. You're not advertising. You're not doing anything with traffic. So just, I guess, touch on that consistency piece. Yeah, when I think about consistency, most people can lack it. Uh, or do lack it because they got what I call fractured focus, mm. right? And it's not like you said, like, hey, this is the goal. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do everything to get there. Well, they can't do that when they got one goal, but then one goal turn into three and three turn into 10. 
And then they fractured about what they're trying to do. They're trying to do a little bit of everything, which means they get a whole lot of nothing done. Yeah. So, so at some point, you got to say, okay, like this is the main thing I talked about for us, like our company. We got a mission. The last mission we had was a three-year goal, right? And literally everything we did. So since we had that goal, when we sit there and create an annual plan, the annual plan is all about hitting the metrics for the goal for that year. And the goal for that year tied into the three-year goal, right? When we meet monthly, it's all about hitting the metrics for the annual plan, which go into the three-year plan. So, so literally, you got to have one hard, concrete goal that you're trying to push towards, like you said. Mm. Then get laser locked in on it and then say, hey, you know what? And it got to be a goal that's going like, like get you to what you want to get to. Yeah. But you got to get locked in on it and then say, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's wild because a lot of times um, in this day and age, you know, a lot of times we're talking about multiple streams of income, right? Multiple streams of revenue. And too many people I find are trying to bring in multiple streams for they got one yeah. that operate, right? So, so instead of multiple streams of, of income or revenue, what I like to call is multiple streams of struggle. Mm. And I got all these streams that don't amount to nothing, yeah. right? I still can't focus on nothing, right? Again, so we got to get focused. The other thing I tell people is you just got to do enough to stay in the game to even live to survive, right? If, if somebody's in your program, like, like to be successful, they got to complete the program. Yeah. And again, it ain't even everything they learn from you. It's like what they learn from the community. It's what they learn from not just being a part of the process, but watching the process of what you do. Yeah. Like too many people, they buy courses, they buy programs, they go to events, but they just sitting there consuming it, right? But not actually watching like what's happening and seeing how can I implement those things into my business. Mm, so, so just getting like clarity around what we're seeing and what we're doing, how we move forward with it. And then like I said, having a goal that's concrete that we go after and, and saying, hey, you know what? Again, I might have this huge big goal but in the meantime, like if I can't achieve the little goals, the little goal might just be, hey, making sure I got enough to pay to stay in the program. Little goal may be, hey, making sure I got enough to support myself so I don't have to go back to a job if I hate it going to a job, right? Yeah. Like it may be, you know, whatever it could be, I got to make enough so that I can get my equipment, I can get my inventory for my e-com, like whatever it is, like you got to make enough to do that first before you get to the big dream, else you'll never be in the game long enough to actually see it. That's good, that's powerful. Cause I realized when I started entrepreneurship, I'll have multiple, you call it multiple streams of struggle. Yes, that sir. was me for a lot of years. <laughs> but I had to do, I just, I didn't have no coaches. I didn't have no guidance. I right. was just trying to figure it out. Like, how can I just make some money? And I fell in the trap of just trying to do seven things. But like you're saying, it's very rare that you make any of them seven successful because you're, you're, you're doing too much. Exactly. So there's power and sometimes really focusing on like on one thing. So it is. It's, it's huge power in that. Hey, you're looking at this and you're probably enjoying this episode and the strategies and the gems that I give you. This is just a fraction of what you learn in my mastermind, right? I would love for you to be able to learn more information on how he's able to help Carter Cofield make a million dollars in one single day, how he's able to help Rochelle Parks make over $500,000 in a day, learn how he's able to help Tevin grow his Instagram following from 70,000 followers to upwards of 200,000 followers within two months and again those results are not typical let me be very clear but they are possible for those who are willing to put work in energy and effort if you're looking at this video right now I want you to go to the website mastermind with neo neo.com so you can apply to see if you're a good fit for a mastermind this is specifically for someone looking to grow their digital business right even though, y'all probably even know David Shan, Sleepers for Suckers, he's inside of my mastermind. You probably know some of you, the student loan doctor, he's inside of my mastermind. You probably know Darius Daniels, he's inside of my mastermind. Those are just a few more people who are absolutely crushing it as a result of being inside of the community. So listen, if you're looking at this, right, and you're probably looking at the episode like, man, you're dropping so much gems but can you imagine how many gyms you'll get when you're actually inside of the environment, when you're tapped into the community? What I want you guys to go to right now is mastermindwithneo.com so you do not miss out on your opportunity to get tapped in. You will have to apply, you will have to get on the call, and hopefully you make the cut to be a part of what we got going on. I'll see you on the inside. Let's get back to the episode. We talked about traffic. Let's talk about sales. Like, how important is sales right now? Like, what's some things that y'all are doing to just get more sales right now. Like, Man, I, I, I wanna challenge anybody out there that's watching right now, because a lot of people got hangups. They get stuck around sales. Yeah. I had somebody tell me last week, they said, um, 
I don't want to be salesy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I told them, like, like, what's the core part of the word salesy? Yeah. She said sales. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you want sales, you might have to be just like a little bit sales. You'll figure out how to make it work for you. So what I'm telling people is that, like, you got to get away from this fear of I don't want to sell stuff to people because the only way you can serve people is to actually sell to them. Yeah. Like, if I think I got a product or service, I'm going to get somebody a transformation or help. If I can't get them to actually want it and buy it, then I'm never going to be able to get them what they need to have a transformation for it. And, and what I also find is that a lot of times entrepreneurs, especially in our community, they have like whatever product or service they got, they trying to change somebody's life. Or they like, hey, I want to give back. I want to provide for, you know, single moms because I was a single mom. I want to, you know, do something for parents or for the elderly or whatever it is. Well, they need money in order to really serve those people and operate at a high level. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about sales, I'm talking about how can you increase the conversions that you got like on your actual um, pages, right? Too many times I meet entrepreneurs they got uh, e-commerce, online, offline, and they don't have built-in upsells. Yeah. They don't have like a way for, you know, when I go into McDonald's, first thing they ask me is, hey, you know, when you get that burger, you want, you want fries and a drink, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to add that to it. If I go to Best Buy, if I if I buy, you know, uh, one of these microphones from Best Buy, as soon as I get to the counter, they're going to be like, you want a protection plan on that? Exactly. A protection plan ain't nothing but an upsell. But yeah. check this out. Neil, you know what a protection plan is? Yeah. A warranty. Right. This might already come with a warranty, warranty. in it. They selling right. you a warranty on top of the warranty you got. And now, does everybody say yes, no, but a percentage do, so they make making probably billions more per year by having a warranty on top of products that already got a warranty on it that maybe 3% of those come back and they ever have to do anything with. Mm. So, so number one, how can we just ask the people like, hey, what else is it? What's the next step? What can we do? The other thing I always talk about is what can you add on to that business, that product, that service you have? So in a supply chain where, hey, like this is the thing that I do right in the middle, I always say, what comes before that thing and right after that thing? Mm. So I had somebody um, last night I was sure. talking to that said, hey, you know, I, I create books, help people create books. I said, well, if all you do is help with the manuscript, like what comes after that? What do they need after that? Well, they need graphic design for the cover. They need somebody to actually publish the book and get it out. They might need somebody to create a, uh, uh, well, ain't no might. They need somebody to create a sales page or a website for the they book. They need somebody to print the book. They need somebody to print the book. They need somebody to run yeah. ads. So that means that's all things that you can incorporate into that business is upsells to make your packages larger, to make them bigger, to be able to charge more. Or even if you don't want to do it, you can partner with somebody, send them the actual leads for it, and then get a kickback for it. So either way, you still make more money. Mm. So, so most of the time, I see people that have all these different money opportunities around them, but they're not tapping into it. Why are they not tapping into it? Because most of them just don't even know because they're not in programs like yours. Yeah. They're not coming to events, right? And they're not connected with people that have already been further down the line. Yeah. And, and if I could say one more thing. Oh, please. When we talk about sales, we don't talk about enough. It's profitability. Yeah. And before you go there, because I don't, I don't want what you just said was so heavy. You dropped so many <laughs> gems that I don't want nobody to miss it. Anybody listening to this episode, you are, you literally said find what goes before that product and goes after that product. Everything you're selling, they, it, the product essentially, it needs help. Like exactly. Every, like that means instantly somebody can find a way to add more money to their business right now just by identifying that. Just product. doing that that one thing. Is that, and like I said, it don't even have to be something that you do. Yeah. Like if, if, I, if I do the manuscripts for the book, I don't have to do graphic design. I don't have to incorporate it. Now, I most likely could, right? Because probably the people you're going to, all they did is get somebody offshore in the Philippines or somewhere that's probably doing the actual graphics. Yeah. They charge you thousands of dollars and they paying, you know, hundreds of dollars for the actual finished product. So you could incorporate it. But if you don't, like I said, just connect with somebody that does and tell them, hey, every time I send you a lead and you close, you know, I want this amount back for the leads. Yeah. Who would not take free leads? Yeah. Anybody. In anybody. It's anybody. Because for that person, that means those are leads coming in that they don't have to advertise for. Yeah. They don't have to go out there and shake hands and kiss babies and do all those things for. It's free money coming in for them. Yeah. So they'd be happy to cut you a piece of it back. Easy. Let's talk, you was talking about the hopping to profitability. Yeah, right. Like, like a lot of uh, business owners, where they get caught up at is when they do get the traffic, they do get the sales, the money start coming in, but they get surprised by how fast the money goes out. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're not focused on profit. Mm -hmm. And then what they see is they say, hey, you know what? I got this e-com store, Shopify site, Amazon, whatever like that. And it's blowing up. But then I realized that, hey, as soon as the money come in, I might, you know, do a, a promo, a promo and make 10 grand. But then for me to actually fulfill that and get all that stuff out and then renew my inventory, that might have cost me eight grand. Yeah. So my 10 grand payday looked like two grand. Yeah. And then that's before taxes and all the other stuff that come out of it that we pretend don't exist. Yeah. So like literally just getting clear on how can I be more profitable? If you think about how you can increase profitability, just two things. It's a bunch of stuff you can do. Two things I want to talk about is number one, thinking about, um, uh, and let's talk about cash flow because people get caught up with cash and not have enough cash to operate. Number one, 
How can we um, take accounts payable to people that we owe money to and press that out further? Now, I'm not saying don't pay them, right? Everything you do need to operate in integrity. Yeah. But what I am saying is a lot of times we treat our business finances like our personal finances, meaning that, hey, uh, we've been trained and taught that um, we should owe no man nothing. We've been trained and taught, yeah. right, that we should never be in debt. Yeah. We've been trained and taught all these things in personal life that we take in the business life. Mm -hmm. So if I have an invoice and I got 30 days to pay it, if I'm paying it as soon as I get it instead of 30 days out, what that's doing is using my actual cash, using my cash flow, my cash reserves, right? When I could maybe push out and still pay it in time within that 30 days, but that gives me 30 days that I can actually move that money and use that money to make more money. Mm. Right. The other thing, instead of, you know, we talked about extending or pushing out the um, lit time that you pay people off, getting your money, right, your receivables, getting those things actually faster. Yeah. So what does that look like? Can I incentivize people to pay me in full so I get all the money up front? I don't have to chase people for money through payments. And then I can redeploy that money back into my business or back in different assets or investments. Yeah, that's good. So so like those different pieces help you keep your money, help you get your money faster and then keep it longer yeah. along the way. One more thing I want to drop about that is that when you think about um, working, right? We do a lot of events, we work with hotels and such. A lot of times you can go to them and actually in the negotiations say like, hey, you know what? Um, can you drop off, um, uh, well, you know, you can say, hey, you know what? We'll give you a little bit more if you extend it out a little bit, right? Or sometimes people paying you, you can tell them, hey, like we'll drop off a few percentage points if we get this money right away. Yeah. So, so one thing I want everybody to take away from, everything is negotiable. Everything. Everything. And with anybody. Yes. Like you think a hotel, they ain't going to negotiate. Yes, they will. Yeah, they do. Yeah. P people ask us all the time, how did you get the hotel to do that? Yeah. So we paid them. We paid them, yeah. Right? I didn't know they would do that. Yeah. Have you ever asked them? Right. <laughs> it's so funny you talk about it, Lamar. I got this model. <clears throat> it's called the ask model. And pretty much once a day, well, I stopped doing it once a day, but once a week, I put out just an ask for something that could seem outrageous or just... And every time somebody knows somebody or some, like yeah. I put out a sponsorship for like 75 grand, right? <clears throat> Shout out my guy, Kaiser. He took the sponsorship. I'm like, yo, and, and here's the thing. When you're putting out these ass, well, this particular one, it needs to be irresistible. It needs to be something that makes sense. So yeah. for 75K at this particular time, you get to come speak on my stage, right? I'm going to give you an ad to promote whatever you're selling. I'm going to send an email to my email list. I'm going to put you on my podcast. It was like four or five other things. Mm -hmm. The investment seventy five thousand. If you don't make it back, which I know you will, I'll give you your money back in a year, mm. with ten thousand for wasting your time. Irresistible offer. Irresistible <laughs> offer. He took that offer. Someone else took the. But guess what? That was money I wasn't gonna have because I didn't put the I didn't put the offer out there anyway. Exactly. So when you talk about it, asking for what you want is critical. Like when I went to one of your events, I mean. You had your face all on the buildings, like all on the windows, all on Starbucks, like you the all logo, over. The logo in the pool. We had a logo, logo in the pool. In the pool. We had a logo it was, in the pool, man. It was crap. <laughs> and, and most people would never have that because they don't ask. Like, I think I went to yours. I'm like, hold on. Add me on elevators now because I think I saw it first yeah. at your event. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me get on the elevators. Let me get here. But that's. Like people got to just start asking, like just. Yeah, can, can I talk about that aspect? Yeah, because I 100%. recently realized I've been dropping the ball and missing major opportunities because yeah. I wasn't asking mm. um, questions or the right questions, right? Yeah. A lot of times we get big speakers and people to come through. And I think a lot of times what we all subscribe to is um, waiting for somebody to pick us, right? Like we waiting to be, somebody be like, man, like what you doing over there? Or sis, what you doing is phenomenal. Let me, let me take you from here to there and create an opportunity. And for a long time, I know we do a special, so I would always think like, hey, it just takes the right person coming in and seeing what we're doing. But what I realized um, over the last year I wasn't doing is I wasn't being clear with the people coming in about how they could actually help me. Yeah. So what I said, I said, hey, I got to make an internal change. So what I said I have to do is every time somebody of influence comes through this door and I get the chance to be in front of them, instead of just, you know, connecting with them, we network and whatever like that, being specific to have like three things I asked them for when none of it amounts to them paying me money. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of times people want to help you. They just don't know how. Yeah. What's those three things, too? Um, it depends. It's different for every person. Everybody. Right? But, but it could yeah. be, hey, you know what? I want, um, you know, who do you know that can, you know, fund my programs for free so that people yep. don't have to pay to join? Yep. They just got to go through an application process. Yeah. You know, it could be, hey, who do you know? I want to take this international and do the same event I have here yeah. all throughout Africa and who all can, throughout Europe. Who can make it happen? Who do you know that can make that happen? And when we talk about the kind of people that we deal with, yeah. they have, like, that influence is one phone call away. Yeah. 
you know, we we um mm. you talk about a great connect, right? We had uh, Matthew Knowles, Beyonce dad, in mm-hmm. for an event. And uh it was our second time, you know, uh, working with him. And at the end of it, right before he walked, and I didn't have to ask for this, but it just it just happened. But I said, man, like I was this close to it not happening. Yeah. And on his way out the door, he said, Hey, uh, you ever been to London? You ever go to London? And I said, We're going this year because we want to do more in London with the brand and expand it out there. He said, well, I got the perfect person. I got a guy who does exactly what you do just in London. I want to connect you. Mm. So we connected. My guy, Raphael. We connected, right? So now Raphael coming to TSP. Yeah. He going to speak at my event. He yeah. bringing me out there to London. I'm going to speak at his event. We cross-pollinating audiences. We working together. What he's very strong at is a weakness of mine. Mm. What I'm very strong at is a weakness of his. Yeah. So now we like, hey, how can we join together? But but again, for Matthew, you know, all that was is one email he sent. Connecting the two of us. Yeah. It ain't cost him a lot of time. It ain't cost him zero dollars, right? But this is something that can have a lasting impact to imprint on my business. So when you get, when when people come up to you and get in front of you, it's like, yeah, you know what? Like, like, what is the ask they have for you? Yeah. In an easy way that you can help. You know everybody, right? Look, I, I, this is funny. If I meet older people, younger people, no matter what. Neo name come up. <laughs> right? So, so, so literally, right, like using that same principle when, when V was running into people, like, like what are two or three things I can specifically ask for that can help propel me and my business forward? Yeah. Wow. And again, that don't involve money. Because if you come to me asking for money. Yeah, that's powerful. That's going to be tough. Ooh. And here's the other thing, Lamar. I think uh, those three things that don't involve money, because here's the thing. A lot of people miss it. They come up to me, they come up to you, and their only ask is, can I get a picture? Mm. The picture is cool. I'll, uh, I'll do pictures with you all day long. But I'm trying to ask you something impactful in that second. We're in the back. Uh, I know you book Magic. We book Magic for an event. So Magic came to the event, right? When Magic came to the event, as he about to leave, hey, Magic, man, we would love for you to mentor us. How can we make that happen? Oh, cool. We'll, we're going to bring you out to the Dodger Stadium. Let's do some lunch. Let's talk and see how we could build. I got the picture because it was just right. meaning as a group, they said, hey, get this picture with Magic. But I, I went for that ask. I went straight for how yeah, how can yeah. we get some mentorship? One, we just paid you. You know what I mean? Right, so, exactly. and So it didn't happen yet, but it will happen. But again, you just said something critical. Everybody you meet, you need to ask one of them critical questions. It may be mentorship. It may be that connection is going to generate you millions of dollars over time. That part. And you know what the wow. easiest thing I realized for me to do at least is just connect people. Yeah. The easy, like most time when somebody and most, you know, it don't even come from an ask most of the time. Yeah. Most time somebody just saying, hey, I do this, this and this. I can be like, hold up. Boom. That person in the back of the red, you need to meet them. Y'all need to connect. It's a synergy there. Or it's a relationship or maybe yeah. y'all can partner because they offer what comes right before or right after your product and make yeah. it happen. Yeah. So the people, they like if they if they say, hey, Neil. I need somebody that does this. Who do you know that does this? As many people as you know, you got somebody you can connect yeah. with. Yeah, that's good. Man, that is powerful. That ass method, but putting that switch. What's the one thing you, you told me just so I, because I got to do it today. We got an event coming up. What's the one, th- what's the cell phone thing you ask the speakers again? Yeah, every time we get a speaker, you know, and that started with magic. Yeah. Because Magic was the most we had ever paid a speaker. Yeah. So we was like, we need to get everything, everything we can. Everything <laughs> we, we can. Get. Yeah. So what we did is we said, hey, you know what? Can you send us a cell phone video um, of yourself? Just, it ain't got to be no longer than 30 seconds. Just saying that, hey, you know, introduce yourself and saying, hey, I'm coming to TSP Live. You know, um, I'm excited to come X, Y, Z. And the reason specifically, I asked, you know this, I asked for a cell phone because if it's anything that's any way complicated, it ain't going to happen. Yep. Again, when you're dealing with busy people, right, the easier yep. you can make it. Anything you want, it better be easy. Mm. So we say, hey, it ain't got to be in the studio. It ain't got to be fancy. He ain't got to be dressed up. We just need like a cell phone video that somebody can just take in the course of the day. It still took a while to get it, but we got it, got right? It. Yeah. And what we did is then we take that cell phone video, and then um, Alex and the team, they actually built out a larger video package around it with highlights of them, yeah. him speaking, all the things like yeah. that. Yep. We took that cell phone video and then we ran radio ads for the conference that year. Mm. We also stripped out some of the audio from it. And then instead of just having the actual uh, radio ad saying, hey, you know what? Magic Johnson's coming. The radio ad started with, 
Hey, what's up? This is Magic Johnson. It's the I'm Magic Man. Listen, right? Listen. It's I was different. trying to remember it. I'm like, ooh, that it's, was a heavy it's, gym. It's different. So now that's become just part of our process. Every time we book somebody, we need that video. I just got the video last week from Miss Kathy Hughes, yeah. right? First black woman to have a, a publicly traded company on a stock exchange. Yeah, crazy. Man, when I got that video, I was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. That's all I want is videos of yeah, Christmas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that, right? I mean, we got a dope one from Jermaine Dupree where he, he and the thing is, we just tell him to make it easy and they'll come in all different kinds. Of, Kathy Hughes was, you know, in front of something regal looking like a TV with an Urban One, TV One, Radio One logo in the background. Jermaine Dupree was in the uh, in the lab, right? He yeah. producing. Yeah. He he, you know, he he beating on the drum machine. Look up, like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. So so, I just need them. It's like one thing you telling your audience that somebody gonna be there. It's something else when they tell them they are gonna be there. Powerful. Yeah. When you said that, I'm about to go implement that. Today, on and it's every. It's rarely does somebody tell us no. Right, it's happened, but rarely do do somebody because it's an easy ask. Yeah, and you throwing that in the contract as well. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, we I want to make sure I got that. Yep. So while while we're on that, right, um, we we in several different masterminds together. We always constantly learning, and you broke down. And I know we can't go in depth, but I want to talk about. And this is for me now. I'm getting so like, how do because my team really needs to hear this. Uh, about the videos with the music, like being intentional around, like we throw videos up and they may don't have music, some got music, mm -hmm. but every video you talks about, it needs to, I believe you use evoke, I believe a yeah, certain emotion, emotion, emotion all in everything. So I wanna talk about that cause I wanna better incorporate that in our business, like across everything from testimonials to you was just you was just doing a video. Here's one without the here's one without the audio. Here's one with it. It was it's game. Almost changing. had people crying in that. Joint. Yeah. So if I begin as again, what I look at in business for me is it's a lot of small things. If I get exactly. a series of the small things right and compound them, it really changes the game. So I wanted you to really touch on just a little bit of how specifically us. How do we? Because we do similar. How do we start doing this with our videos? Yeah. And like you said real quick, right? It's the small things. Everybody looking, they always ask you, what's the one thing you would do? It ain't never one thing, it's not. right? It's all the small things. So yeah. one of the things like I said, we've done now seven full length documentaries over the years. We used to do our own um, eight, nine, 10 city tours, going to mega churches, going to yeah. um, rent out our own theaters. What I learned, right? Cause we were showing documentaries. Nine out of 10 of them, ain't had no celebrities in them, nothing. Yeah. We selling our theaters because of the emotion. And what it does, if you think about movies, right? Like, like what they do is they use sound, audio, and music specifically to drive what they want your emotion to be. So if they think, hey, you're watching a horror movie, whenever you know something is about to happen, because some music is coming on that's getting you like anxiety and dramatic around it. Um, if they want you to be happy, they got happy music playing. If they want you to be sad, right, or something kind of melancholy, they're gonna run a piano undertone or maybe something with strings, but it's gonna be something, right, that like goes along with it. So what I'm saying is a marketer, you should be using music in movies, right, in video the exact same way. If all you're doing is taking video and shooting it and putting it out there, which is what, what most, you know, video people do, you miss, you missing everything, yeah. right? So every time we make a video, what I ask the video team is, what is the emotion we trying to go for here, yeah. right? Um, every time we do an event, like a lot of people do recaps, so besides the recap, we open up each day with an actual video. Yeah. And that video we open up what is all about setting the intention and right, what's the emotion in the room that we want for that day before anybody ever hit that stage, mm. right? So we got them, you know, we got them hype, we got music coming in, but even like that, right, before we show the video, for the time we open up the doors to get people in, my DJ is playing music. Yeah. What's the DJ playing? The DJ playing specifically what we talked about because we scripted it out. Wow. It's not just a like, come in here, do what you do. We talk about what's the emotion that day. Shh. I might say, hey, day one, we come in here, we in Atlanta, we got you know 80% uh, of the people from other states. I might tell them, go to the, the crunkest, little Johnist, yeah. <laughs> like, like East Side Boys, like give me yeah. the whole thing of like people cannot sit still in their seat because I want them to know they somewhere different mm -hmm. before I even get to the stage. Yeah. And then we're going to do an opening video that's going to drive emotion. And, and the emotion could be, I want you to get excited. Uh, we used emotion, right? I wanted my audience to get pissed and to galvanize them. So what I did is I showed, you know, social media wild. Yeah. So we put up a video saying, hey, this is what 100 million in black business look like. Uh, and it was a lot of the ladies in our, in our program doing the Cuffit Challenge when that just came out. Mm -hmm. So of course, right, Jokers was hating on social, yeah. hating, hating, hating. We did a video, we pulled all those actual comments together, we voiced them all over, and we was playing them, boom, 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 boom. So the audience is like, 
what, right? They get galvanized. They like, nah. And then after that, I come in and I give a message about, hey, these people in these comments, they weren't here when this happened in our audience. They weren't here when these two people did a deal. They weren't here when these people crossed the stage. They weren't here to see this, this, and that. And it pulled us all together. Hey, listen, I had to stop the episode. Listen, really quick. This is the book responsible for making so many people grow their social media, right? Their income, their impact, and influence leveraging social media. And you're probably looking at it like, yo, Neil, I don't feel like waiting for you to ship me this book, right, y'all? Go to my IG cash book right now, myigcashbook.com. Get a direct download to get this in your inbox so you can immediately start leveraging the strategies. This is over 86 pages. Every single chapter is going to give you a gym to grow your audience, to grow your impact, and to grow your, your influence, right? And I literally created it for you. This is the same thing I literally watch people go crazy with. So go to myigcashbook.com. Go ahead and claim your copy. It will be in your inbox. And when you do that, buy everything that it comes with. I got an IG course with it and a bunch of other things that I know is going to truly help you go crazy. Myigcashbook.com. Also, um, with our actual programs, I talked about the fact that when you sell somebody to a program, you have to keep reminding them, right? While you're serving them, you have to also keep reminding them why they joined in the first place. Yeah. So we use video, we use music, right? Um, at our private events. Because a lot of people do a big thing for you at the big conferences and stuff, but then when you got your clients, it's like whatever. Yeah. So we open up each of those client events with an actual video, with music, with messaging to again, remind them that, hey, I'm in a special place. Yeah. Hey, this community is unlike anything else in the world, right? And kind of matching that down to it. Powerful. <clears throat> I told people, mm. you was at our mastermind when we were, um, you know, when I talked about this and I, I said, hey, you know, who's the most popular person, right? Most well-known uh, uh, work out of Star Wars and people saying Princess Leia, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker. I said it's John Williams. John Williams is a composer. Yeah. More people know that music from Star Wars than any actor, actress, or storyline. Right. Right? Because because they can recognize that music right away from Star Wars. Mm. The same dude that did Star Wars also did the music for E.T. He also did the music for uh, Jaws. The dun dun yeah, dun Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. right? Ooh, yeah. I remember that Jaws. Yeah, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park. So, so again, like how can we infuse music to drive the emotion that we want to get people close to the sale? Because if we can't sell them, we can't serve them. And if we can't serve them, like what are we doing this for? Man, that's crazy. So let me ask you this, just so every song that is played, you know the song that's about to play. If it ain't every song, we talk about intention. Now my intention. DJ now, in the early days, yes. Now my but DJ gotta, been together like- He know you, like the back- Yeah, like eight, nine years. Are you doing this years. on virtual events too? Um, yes. Yeah. So intensely on virtual events, we had a DJ there. We playing specific stuff. Bert, let me ask you. So five day virtual event, DJ every day. So it depends on what the virtual event is. Yeah. If it's like a conference type of thing yeah. that we're trying to do, we'll have a DJ for it. If it's like a challenge, we don't have the DJ for that. But what we do is we intentionally infuse, again, videos with music and emotion. So what does that look like? Before we actually start the challenge, right, we do what we call our pre-roll. And me and Alex on the team, we sit there every day. Like Alex sent me, we got a challenge coming up. Alex sent me the pre-roll. Hey, this is the pre-roll schedule for coming up. You got any input? And we talk about what are the videos that we want to play before that day. So it might be something big to show that, hey, this is what it is. It might be a testimonial I got from Magic Johnson. Because if you don't know me, that's cool. But you see Magic on that joint, you be like, I know that dude. And if he said Lamar good, yeah. let me pay attention. Yeah. Um, we could be conference recaps. Because if we know that we got a conference coming up or the conference is a part of what we're selling, we want to get you thinking already before I get to the pitch that, hey, I need to be at the next event. Yeah. So we intentional about every day, the videos that we run to actually open up the day with. And even if we got, uh, you know, we'll do like a pre-VIP for the VIPs. We'll do a pre-VIP for them for 30 or so minutes. Then we stop, do pre-roll, right, to say, hey, we transition into the actual event. Everybody else come on and then go into it. But we don't do a day where we don't have emotionally infused video playing in that actual challenge. That's powerful. Yeah, when, when I saw it, I'm like, man, we, I'm doing video, I mean, <clears throat> audio, I mean, we doing video, but I, have, I don't think it been intentional enough. Even just the videos that I put out, like some of it need to have some background music on it, trying to evoke a certain emotion. Like I follow these different guys online who do a lot of giving back and they all play this similar music over the top when they're giving back, like when they're doing it's gonna, charity. It's gonna make you feel a certain make way. make you feel a certain way, like, yo, this is it's, it's heartwarming. And it's, move a lot of times it's gonna move you without even knowing yeah. that it's gonna move you. Yeah. And, and that's it, right? You were talking about, I showed a video that was a moving testimonial. One of our members got choked up a little bit and was crying. Yeah. And I played that same one with just no music whatsoever. And then 
the same one again, right? With just like a royalty free track we got just off a website for a couple bucks. Um, but it was light music, but it totally changes the entire emotion of what's going on in that video. Yeah, that's good. Right now, um, anything to look like we're in a new season in our life. I don't know if things are changing. Uh, if you see money coming in a certain way, whether slow or faster. I'm telling people right now, you got to get better at what you do. Mm. Like, it's not just a throw up a video, expect them to buy. You got to actually become good at the thing that you're selling. I don't care what type of business it is. Um, what's your, just your advice for people just leveling up for them? Just <clears throat> yeah. our team, I'm like, yo, we got to be better. Like yeah. we got, I got to be better. So what's some, any, any hacks that's, on just being better? Man, that's, that's what you said is so good. One of the things I tell myself is I got to go back to doing the things that we did. Cause a lot of times yep. as you grow, right, you kind of lose some of the things that you did to be successful in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I say, I want it, like you said, the, the, here's like, you can follow the clues of success. So if you got two successful people talking and you watching this, what Neo said and I said, the number one thing I did is say, what can I do? Yeah. So you was like, like, hey, we got to get better, right? Like internally <clears> looking <throat> in. So I'm looking at that. Uh, interesting shift happened over the last year and a half, two years, right? We go through the pandemic where first everybody's scared out of their mind. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of people end up making a lot of money during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But what they didn't do a lot of times is listen to everybody talking to them. Because you had a lot of new business owners going in and people telling them, that, hey, this may not last forever. Yeah. Right? So what they didn't do, why they did get money, is they didn't do a lot of the fundamental core pieces of marketing. What does that mean? Okay, I got these customers more than I would normally have because the daggone malls and stores are shut down, so they forced to go online. But what I didn't do is I didn't nurture those people. What I didn't do is capture the customer data. What I didn't do is use that new list I got and try to get more people. Or it could be, hey, like, like TikTok uh, was going crazy a little while ago. It was more wide open than the other networks. Whenever something is going well, how can you maximize it and realize that whatever's happening now won't last forever? That's a fact. New, newer people in business got a problem with that because even if people tell them they don't get it. But you got to realize that, that um, one of the greatest things I've ever heard is that every industry, every business has a life cycle, a time when it starts and a time when it ends. Mm -hmm. And you could think, well, well, you know what? Like, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook would never go away. Instagram would never go away. Man, we start on something called MySpace. Mm -hmm. Had people watch this won't know what that is, yeah, right? Yeah. But guess what? It went away. Yep. And at the time, it felt per bigger than any Periscope of these went it was away. A, Periscope. It's still Did I say there. Clubhouse? Clubhouse? Clubhouse ain't gone away. Yeah. But that joint sure ain't what it was. That thing was pop. Listen, I ain't gonna lie to you. They should have sold that thing when that thing was <laughs> cooking. I'd have took like a billion or two. Let me take that off. The and table. now they, they slowed down. Just recently, I was reading an article last week. I did a, a social clip about where well, they just did massive layoffs. Yeah. Right. Because all that growth. So so we went through that time. But what we coming up in is now this age of AI. And what I've been telling people about AI is um, AI is about to have us in a great place. We're using some great things. And, and, and people feel like everybody talking about it, but you gotta realize that what marketers talk about, the majority of the world, like it may feel like it's saturated in our conversations, yeah. but the majority of the world still ain't using none of this stuff or where or what chat GPT and none of this stuff is. That's a fact. So you're still ahead of the game. Mm. But what's about to happen with AI, besides all the good things, it's about to be scam city. Yeah. Because the first person that could just take something that they ain't know nothing about and sell it, you know, in a course or ebook or whatever it may have been before, now not only will they have that, they'll have the ability to create stuff that they never could have created before without knowing nothing about what they actually create. All they got to do is know the prompts. Here's what the opportunity is, Neil. People that actually know how to do the stuff, yeah. they're going to be in demand. Yep. People will go out and they're going to get burned a couple times, but once they get burned, as you know, right, then they're going to get, you know, kind of tight to the vest. They know they're going to need help. So the question is going to be, how do I know you the real deal? Yeah. So if you can show them that, hey, I got consistency, <clears throat> a track record. Hey, you know what? Like, you can tell I know what I'm doing because I was here before AI ever hit the streets. Yeah. We was having success before then. Um, if you say, well, I'm just starting out now, right? Somewhere here now. Guess what? You're still before AI because AI has not hit the masses yet, right? Like my mama don't know what AI is. Yeah. Like, like when your yeah. mama know, right? When It's when, still so when early. Old, it's still early. So you still got a chance to get in and you can show, hey, you know what? This is what I did before. The other thing is what's going to be at a premium are things like live events. Mm -hmm. Are things like, you know, when you can put somebody on a hot seat and answer their question directly live. Yeah. Without you going to type in the chat yeah. GPT, hey, I'm this kind of business, yeah. trying to get this kind of people, what should I say? Mm -hmm. But when you can have conversations, when you can do podcasts and somebody can ask you a question, you can directly answer the question back. Everything you can do to validate that you the truth is about to be magnified. Mm. That's good. Ooh, and you said something, because you're right. I'm like, I look at what we're doing, and I'm like, 
but I only follow marketers and business owners. <laughs> so I'm like, so I feel it, like everybody it, on every, it, but they're not saturated, but they're not. It's just because that's all I follow. I only follow business owners. So it, it's a huge opportunity with AI. It it's is. a huge opportunity now, period. That make, I'm thinking about, so we used to have a VA staffing agency um, and we provide a virtual assistance. But now what we're doing, we're bringing that back, but we call it AI VAs. Mm -hmm. So essentially, your same exact VA that you have, we're training them up to be able to do 10X more than any other VA there is. Mm -hmm. So just imagine having a VA and now they do video editing, using video.io where right. they could just edit a bunch of videos they do they turn in your blog posts hey man my video team told me chill with all that yeah, yeah right video. they told me <laughs> yeah, right right exactly right 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 they because they won't have a job you know they they'll have a job yeah. i'm just saying people are reducing their their team because of ai hey I'll, I'll tell you what though one of the things because because our team is is we're we're a growing company but yeah. our team is still not uh saturated right it's like lean as i can keep it yeah one of the things I was Lean telling is our, good, man. One of the I thing, want Lean. Yeah, it is. One of the things I was telling our team, though, uh, we had a conversation about AI because I said, I don't want y'all to be worried about your jobs. Because yeah. people should be worried about their jobs yeah. when it's coming if they ain't took a good look. Yeah. But I, I said, what I want you to do is I want you to shift about how I can use it as an asset for my role Fast. and what I do. Yes. And I want you to think about not that, like my, because my goal is not for, it's what you talked about just now. My goal is not for AI to replace you. My goal is for you to be more efficient and increase the amount of output then you can other even think of doing right. You know, if you if you wrote copy and did you know uh, uh, three emails in a day, how can we now do three emails, five blog posts, you know, twenty Shh. social media prompts? That's it. Like you create the value for yourself. Mm -hmm. So instead of staying away from it, I know a lot of people gonna be scared and just hope that people don't use lean it. in on it or rant on social that hey, you know what, you shouldn't use that because you'll never get nobody as good as me. Like you said, lean in, figure out how you can make it more of an asset and how you can make yourself better, more efficient. And more important to an organization exactly. or to your clients than you ever were before. Yeah, that's because think about it. Imagine you like, yo, twenty here today. Here's twenty social media captions. Here's ten videos. Here's right. this. Here's this. Is whoa. You know, I'm like, hey, you really. I appreciate how you leveraging this. Right. That's powerful. And and the, and the beauty of AI, right? I mean, let's 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 talk about um, what's wild is like people like you know you got all these prompt engineers coming up and stuff. I don't know none of the prompts. Yeah. All I know is I know how to keep asking for more and go deeper. Yeah. I ask that thing a question, and and because I know the content and the subject matter, I can ask it a few more questions. Yeah. When that come up, I can say, "Tell me more and go deeper." So what I've been using it for a lot as a speaker, I've been using it for research. Yeah. Because a lot of times when I talk, right, if I'm telling a story or if I'm talking about statistical data, things like that, that's stuff that would take me hours and hours that's to go girl. look up <laughs> and to find in the source. Now I can get that same stuff in minutes dive deeper into it and then infuse it into what I do, not to replace it, but to make it better. Yeah. Right. Uh, one of the things I've, I've been doing right now, I, I love it. I was doing a test on it. We got a, um, uh, a new network, the convo, right? The streaming network yeah. for TV stuff. Um, so I was like, Hey, you know what? I told her make a marketing plan for the convo. I want to see what it did. Yeah. And it was decent. So I told her, Hey, you know, continue. Let's go, let's go more. Right. Uh, somebody told me, Hey Lamar, you can just type continue and it'll go deeper. Yeah. So then it gave me like six phases. I said, Hey, break down each one of those six phases. Then it broke it down deeper. And one of them was around partnerships and collaborations. We talked about borrowing traffic earlier. So then I said, hey, on this part, not only, right, do you tell me, like, you know, that I need to collaborate and partner with people. I tell me, who should I partner with? Yeah. And then that joint gave me five different categories with five people in each category. Wow. It said, these are the five conferences you should partner with. Wow. These are the five influences, right? These are the five businesses. These are the five, like, nonprofit organizations, right? Um, and it juiced me up because I was one of the people on there. Yeah, I was crazy. like, I'm made. I'm famous. Yeah. I'm out here in AI, Neo. So, right, I, I, I did it. And it was it was beautiful, right? But then my wife, Ronnie, I was telling Ronnie in the background, because she don't be tripping off none of this stuff. I said, Ronnie, like, it did all of this. She said, tell her to write the email that you would send to the people for the partnerships. Wow. And that joint wrote the email. Wow. And this email was exponentially better wow. than any email I've ever written. Wow. So, so literally now, like you said, like how can you just enhance what you do and make it 10 times better yeah. by using the AI, the artificial intelligence to move faster? I got to leverage more of it. I, as you just said, I'm like, yeah, I'm not even going deep enough in it. All that continue this to this to this. Check, check. Oh, yeah. You know what's wild? Because I'm not even that dude. Yeah. I'm not even pretending like I'm an AI. Yeah. Man, listen, if I did it, you can do it. Because right. all I'm like is just like, tell me more. Yeah. If you got any subject matter expertise, I'm just asking a question. And I know that it'll go deeper. I'm just asking, tell me more. I was talking to a client um, that does uh, uh, travel trips to music festivals. 
And I was talking about, hey, like, give them my right thing. You need to just partner with people that already, it's all type of affinity groups around, you know, festivals and things like that. So we just went to AI and started searching, right? Who are the, you know, organizations you should partner up with? Who are the groups? Who are the, who are the um, associations or who are the, the music festivals? Yeah. And got all the data out. Then I started telling me, give me contact information. Yeah. It gave me contact information. Yeah. You're going to love this because you'll be acquiring all the, all the social platforms. Yeah. I said, tell me um, 20, the 20 top Facebook groups Ooh. for jazz lovers. Ooh. And he gave it to me. Wow. Then God. I went back and did this, though, Neo. I said, give it to me with how many members in each one. And it did it. Wow. Now, I tried to get the contact information. It ain't had a contact information yeah, for those people. That'd be crazy. But at that point, I had the groups. I had how many, how many uh, followers in these groups. And, and then I told her, guess what? Same thing I said with mine. I said, make me the contact, the email, so I can send to these group owners about how to approach and a partner with them. And it wrote it. Yeah, I, I haven't gotten that deep yet. Yeah, it was over with. Done. <laughs> Golly. Listen, man, I, I hope y'all just caught all the game that was delivered on this episode. We probably got to bring you back for a part two because I want to dig a little deeper in operations. Yeah. Like how y'all managing y'all teams even. And I know your wife played a huge role and yeah. she's a master at hiring and really building out that team. But I'm just grateful that you came on here really just to share just some strategies. I know y'all got hundreds of millions in uh, customer revenue of helping people make money. So just tell everybody how they can tap in with you and get connected with you, Lamar. Yep, appreciate it, man. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, anything we're doing, you can find me online at traffic sales and profit.com and then on socials at traffic sales and profit and at Lamar Tyler. Let's get it, y'all. So again, man, another amazing episode, crushing it. And again, if you're listening to this, man, make sure you check out Lamar. He got a conference that he do twice a year. So if you miss the next one, go to the next one. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Some of the best, some of the most high class conferences that I've ever experienced. So make sure you guys tap in. So again, we'll see you guys on the next episode.